That was beautiful. Yeah, that Today is the solar eclipse of America, and that is actually pretty cool. I got my eclipse glasses, and the sun, the sun, right now, is right there. Not sure if that actually recorded, but I don't know. But, exciting. Chicken moon. Hey guys, so it's about, um, 10... 15, maybe even like 20 or 30 minutes after uh, the solar eclipse has uh, passed where I live and honestly it was amazing. I am actually really happy that I was able to live in a part of my state where the eclipse would take, would become in, had become in full view. Yeah, all the people that came to my town uh, made things a little crazy, like the whole, like not only that, accidents were a lot more reoccurring, and basically uh, medical copters were flying in and out of the hospital. But other than that, I am I was so pumped to get to be able to have the chance to see something this amazing and it was so beautiful. <laughs> Sadly we couldn't let our dogs out into the front yard to view this with us because one's a little escape artist and the other one we probably could have let out. Yeah, the escape artist is there, trying to go to sleep. <laughs> but is it actually very it was actually very exciting and very beautiful. I got kind of bored a little bit, waiting for it to become close enough for me to be put on my solar eclipse glasses and watch it. But other than that, it was absolutely amazing. My older brother actually um, videotaped it, and he called it the lunar eclipse. I thought that was hilarious because it is a solar eclipse, a complete and utter solar eclipse. It was amazing, and. I wasn't expecting it to become, I wasn't expecting it to be that beautiful, and uh, it looked like that the whole area just became an utter sunset. While the sky was, the top of the sky was dark, it looked like there was a ring of a sunset. It was awesome and beautiful, and I loved seeing the stars. And we, if we hadn't told mo my mom, to take off her eclipse glasses to look up at it she would have completely missed the beauty of it and of course when the sun started peeking out we had to put it back on because if you look at the sun without your eclipse glasses you risk making yourself blind but it was spectacular after this i even have a little clip on how me and my little brother kyle we're super excited right after the eclipse had happened. But here's something really interesting. The thing about the eclipse thing is... So the most amazing fact is that not only is the, like, not only does it take a hundred years for... It's going to take another hundred years for a solar eclipse to happen in my area again, which means I'm going to be rather really old or dead when the next one happens. But the really interesting thing is that the solar eclipse actually happens like <clears throat> 10 to 20 years, honestly, in like certain areas of the world. But all in all, for it to make one point, it takes like 99 or 100 years to go all the way around the world and make that solar eclipse happen once more. So, and the other interesting fact is that, like, our moon is like the, is actually the size of a planet. 
So, if you didn't know that, our moon is technically a planet. It is planet size. It just happens to like circle around our Earth, which is ten times bigger. And the weirdest theory, and scientists have this weirdest theory that scientists, I already said scientists, scientists have this weirdest theory that uh, the moon was actually a planet who got caught in our orbit. But the thing is, like, after astronauts brought a piece of the moon back to Earth, from one of their voyages to said planet, the Earth, the Earth and the Moon are actually made out of the same materials. So that means that the Earth, that the Moon is actually made out of the uh, same rocks and sol solar rocks that have come together to make our planet Earth. And without the Moon, uh, we would have no waves. We wouldn't even have evolved as far as we have, because technically, the Moon is help along with the Sun is helping us survive. It's like a mixture between the sun, who gives us warmth, light, and stuff like that, and energy, while the moon gives us so gives us fire, environment control, and then the, here's the earth, this is our environment. It just be that we can make it. it kind of makes it sound like there were intergalactic science experiments, if you really think about it. But here's something else that's really cool. Since Jupiter uh, is the closest planet to the sun, and it has three moons, it is actually one of the planets that have, has the most amount of complete solar eclipses, and it even has triple solar eclipses at the same time. And that's because it has three moons. But the thing is, like, our moon is the biggest, we have, our Earth has a pretty big, is like bigger than the planets before us. Of course, there are also planets behind us who probably has bigger moons than we do. So when you really think about it, we're, it's pretty exciting. And not only that, if you look at it through an alien's perspective, we are actually just a speck honestly, because we are technically a star to other life forms on the Earth, uh, uh, other life forms in space. So, if the sun and the moon, along with our own environment, helps produce life, what makes... That means that there is definitely life out there, uh, probably in our galaxy or outside of our galaxy. Which means other people. And I'm not saying aliens, because technically, to them, we'd be aliens. So I'm going to call them people. So yes, there are life. There is most likely life outside of our own, out of our whole prefecture, I'm going to call it. Because outside our galaxy, we have a lot of different, it's amazing, honestly. So if you really think about it, like, but another thing is, like, like, when you think about how everything works, we are kind of like something else's science project. See on how long that we can survive on our own. That is until it comes to the part where Earth becomes uninhabitable and inhabitable, and we'd have to leave our planet for survival. But the other thing about it is, like, but the other thing about that is that, and we're thinking about environment, is that we're actually speeding up the process of when we would have to leave our own planet, our own home, and that's be, and that's with the soul, and that's with the whole radioactiveness, the wars, and stuff like that. Because technically, with all the toxic that we're putting into our atmosphere and in our air and in our planet, we are slowly killing our planet. And I'm not an environmentalist, but I'm pretty sure that we need this to live. Not only that, there's also the population in 
issue because we are technically popping out more uh, youngins than we have the resources to maintain. So it's rather the earth's gonna be all like, okay, I've had enough, and kill out like probably a little over half of our population, or we do that ourselves. You hear me? Because it's insane on what happens, honestly. Weird science facts. But another thing that kind of bothers me is that not only... But one thing that keeps popping in my head is like when we do have to leave our planet to search out for a new home, it makes me kind of wonder on how we're going to end up treating the original inhabitants of that planet. Because uh, if you haven't noticed from our history, we are actually very violent creatures. Fighting each other over stupid things like land, uh, resources, and stuff like that. But honestly, that could actually be avoided by actually coming together, making a plan, and executing it. Instead of just like throwing all crap to the wind and just going straight for the kill. It's stupid. And only that, if you also take a look at our history on how we had, on how uh, Christopher, Com Christopher Columbus had discovered the new world, and how we had colonized uh, what we call America today, uh, we. Our ancestors actually kind of ignored the whole fact that there was actually living people here. And back then, uh, they were actually... It was actually pretty messed up back then. Because not only were they the natives of the land, uh, they actually lived a lot differently than the English. So, it was actually pretty weird and pretty stupid that the English called them savages because of the way that they had lived, when honestly they were actually probably living a hell of a lot smarter because they didn't need uh, brick walls or stuff like that. They had, they didn't need brick walls, they didn't need all this fancy stuff when they could when honestly, all they needed was the nature around you, around them. So, honestly, if we, if the English had uh, pulled back on their own egos and actually learned more from the natives, we actually could be living in a lot of different ways. Um, we could be living a lot more peacefully and stuff like that and have less controversy, but, and the weirdest thing is, even after the whole, and the weirdest thing on how we got our freedom was through war, which honestly, that one couldn't be avoided from, that could actually have been avoided if the king of England would have just been all like, okay, you can be your own country. But if there's one thing that I've learned from history is that doesn't happen. Because technically, um, the king back then, uh, from America's point of view, saw it as a rebellion, hatred, and disrespect for the fact that they are they're disrespecting their motherland. And honestly, if you really thought about it, and from America, um, and from America's side of, and from America's point of view, that is actually a uh, pretty, because like, so it's two different point of views. England uh, saw it as, or Great Britain or whatever, saw it as the colonies are betraying 
and disrespecting their motherland. While America, or the colonies saw back then, uh, was that um, England, Great Britain, whatever, didn't see them as uh, pure-blooded anymore. And they were just throwing all these different, and it just caused more conflict, you know? And it just got even more stupider and stupider. And basically, it just made a whole civil war. Which, honestly, if you really think about it, uh, America might be going through its own civil war. Which is, again, really stupid and probably could be avoided. But, that's just my opinion. I'm weird. So, hopefully when we have to leave our own planet to, uh, find our new home, we actually think, like, during that time when we meet a new life out there, we won't call them alien or anything. Uh, we will just, like, see them as, hopefully we can see them as people, not aliens, and, um, actually try to learn more about their culture. And just try not to take over and dominate. So, yeah. That's my weird little facts about science and our galaxy. Along with a little history, which is weird. So, let's take a quick look at... Uh, let's take a quick look at our my little clip from when me and my brother got really excited. Are you typing? Okay, so the eclipse... Uh, it's starting to fade out. He didn't understand what was so cool about it until he actually saw it. I told everyone to take their glasses off so they can see. Well, technically, Dylan Cole kind of beat it to the punch, but still, that was beautiful. No, that was actually and amazing. Check it out. The world is fading back into the light. It's awesome. So yeah, oh, gorgeous. So if you haven't already, subscribe and hit that little bell button because I'm kind because of, I make videos as often as I can, and. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up because that really boosts my confidence. And I will see you guys again next time in my next video. So I'll see my little slender babies later. Bye. You think your life is done, you took it all with him. So you drink enough for it to wash away the sins. It's such a shame.